first thing to do is to just set up the problem. Um, so we have a uh, light at the very bottom of a pool right here shining upward. Uh, the pool is three meters deep and you want to know the size of that light cone, um, forgive that expression, um, that's being seen on the surface of the pool. Uh, you got N2, which is air, and you got N1, which is the water that's inside the pool. Now, the best way to go about this is to recognize the uh, total internal reflection. So you see that if light were to come right here, say, go up where the dotted line is, it will actually exit that pool. So you will see the light coming out from the bottom of the pool. If the light ray were to go, say, off to the side here, you're going to achieve total internal reflection, and it's going to actually come back inward. So we want to know what the minimum angle is, such that you can barely see the light that comes out of um, from the bottom of the pool. And so we want to know what that diameter of this light circle is. So let's look at uh, the geometry of this. So we can say that it's pretty much symmetrical that, you know, whatever angle that the light spews out this way is the same as the angle that light spews out this way and the same laws of physics apply. So we'll call this angle um, theta critical and that's the appropriate uh, subscript for it anyway. Um, if we look at the angles that they interact with the border of the water and the air, you'll see through, uh, what is it called, uh, interior angles, that the critical angle is going to be the same here as it is here. And again, for parallel borders, you're going to have critical angle here, which is the same as the critical angle on this side here. Okay, so uh, this might help you, but uh, let's see how we can find D out. First thing I'm thinking is, let's go ahead and figure out what D is based on this critical angle, because you know that there is an equation governing what the critical angle needs to be for total internal reflection to come about. Um, so let's go ahead and find D in terms of critical angle theta sub C. I'm seeing that tangent of that critical angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. And the opposite in this right triangle scenario is going to be half of that D that we want to find. The adjacent is going to be the height, which we're going to call h. So we're going to say a tan theta of c is 1 half of d divided by h. And now we can go ahead and solve for d in terms of h, which we know already, and the critical angle, which we will find out on a side quest. So it ends up that d is equal to 2h tangent of theta sub c. And now we have our overlying equation. We know what H is, uh, we need to find D. We don't know what this is. So here is the side quest. Okay, so we use this critical angle formula as a side quest, evidently. That's gonna be theta of C is inverse sine of N2 and N1 where N2 is going to be lower index than N1. Go ahead and plug in the numbers, 1.00, and one for water is 1.33. Um, we get, uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug this into D, which is then going to be 2H tangent of that. And now plugging in the numbers. We finally get D. D is going to be two times three tan of an inverted sine of this right here. And there's only going to be one value that comes out with the calculator. That is 6.84 meters. So that basically says that if you were to stand above the water, the light cone that you see 
in the water before total internal reflection occurs is going to have a diameter of 6.84 meters. After that, I mean, obviously, I think since light goes out this way, if you stand right here, you can still see light coming in from, from there. But you will not see light coming in from, say, here. So to you standing over here, the light cone is going to have that finite size. And that's going to be that size of D.